All right, grade 11 chemistry. Today's topic is stoichiometry um, and big wheels. And we're gonna learn what a big wheel is today as well as some chem stuff. But anyway, um, what stoichiometry is really, if you kind of simple, uh, simplify it, it's a study of recipes, right? Um, so don't be blown away by the name as the title here of the slide suggests. Of course, this PowerPoint is brand new. It's on your D2L page for the course. Just made it up this morning. So I'm going to be going through this and of course doing some work on here as well. So stoichiometry is a science of determining the relative proportions or quantity ratios in which substances react. Now when we talk about quantities, quantities are things that have a number and a unit right so we talk about quantities and our unit right now is quantitative chemistry that means there's a number and a unit qualitative also can be used to describe something but here you're using things that don't use numbers so if we did for example there's uh, no numbers here, but you're still describing it. So if you we were to describe like a fire truck, we might say that it has six tires. You know, it is five tons. One of the hoses is 500 feet. All right, so we see number, unit, number, unit, number, unit. Qualitative, it's red. It's big, right? It might be shiny if they just washed it. So these still describe the fire truck, but in a qualitative way. Quantitative is this way. So what we're looking at in stoichiometry are the numerical relationships between substances that are undergoing a chemical reaction together and the products that they form. So basically what it's telling us is how much of A do we need to react with a certain amount of B to produce a specific amount of AB, right? So we look at that. There's an equation. How much A do we need to react with B to get a specific amount of AB? So you've already done stoichiometry in your head a bunch of times. You just haven't realized it yet, right? But enough of that silly chem stuff. Let's talk about the big wheel, the real reason that we're here today. So, um, have you ever seen a big wheel before? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say a big wheel? There was a toy big in the uh, 70s and 80s, anyway. So behold the big wheel. This is what a big wheel looks like. And it was an awesome toy. This thing sent more kids home crying, bruised, scraped to the emergency room than I think probably any other toy, right, in the history of mankind. Um, and, and this, by the way, is not a brake. That would actually spin you out, right? So newbies to the world of big wheeling um, would hit this and then end up sideways going down a hill or hitting something, you know, a curb or something sideways and flying off this thing. Notice there are no seat belts on said big wheel. Anyway, so let's take a look, right? I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making these again. I'm going to start a big wheel factory, make a ton of money building big wheels again. All right, because it was such an awesome toy. So what do I need if I'm gonna build big wheels? Well, I'm going to need a body, which is B. That's the red part here and the forks and that, right? I'm also going to need one seat. You can see the little blue seat here. So I got a seat, S is for seat. I need three wheels, two in the back and one in front. So W and I need three of those. I also need two pedals. There's a pedal on both sides of this front tire. So two and pedals will use P. And we also need two hand grips, right? You gotta get a good grip on this thing. So hand grips will use hand grips as H. And that is going to form our big wheel, right? So if I put all these together, I end up with the formula of a big wheel. So this is the formula for a big wheel. All right. So what I've basically done 
is I've come up with a recipe to do this. And here's our parts here and our big wheel here that we have here. So these are my reactants and this is my product here. All right. So that's what this equation is showing. So the formula for a big wheel is right here. There's what a big wheel is. So orders start coming in for my big wheel. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first order, five big wheels come in. All right. So what am I going to need? Well, I'm going to just draw this over again really quickly in one little line here. See if I can do it neatly and get it all on one line. So B plus S plus three wheels plus two pedals plus two hand grips yields a big wheel. Nice and neat. All right. So you can see here what I've done is I basically made a chemical equation. And we're following the law of conservation of matter, which says what goes in must come out. It is balanced. And so this is for, these are the ingredients for one big wheel, right? I've got one big wheel here. There's no number here, but there's technically a one that would go there. All right. Well, the order just came in for five big wheels. So what am I going to need? Well, in your head, you're thinking, well, I'll need five bodies, I'm going to need five seats, I'll need 15 wheels, because there's three wheels on each big wheel, five big wheels is going to need 10 pedals, and I'll need 10 hand grips, and that'll give me my five big wheels, and of course the formula for a big wheel doesn't change. So again, if I look at it to make five, I just simply multiplied all of this by five and multiplied all of this by five. So there's a one here that we don't see. I multiplied it by five. There's a one here. I multiplied it by five. Three multiplied by five. Two multiplied by five. Two again multiplied by five to get us to five big wheels. All right? What would happen if we needed a dozen big wheels? So now we need 12 big wheels. All right? Well, now we've got to take, since we've got a 12 in front of this, right, technically, we would need what? Well, we need 12 bodies. We would need 12 seats. Each big wheel has three wheels. If I got 12 big wheels, I've got 12 times three, which is 36 wheels. 12 times two is 24 pedals. And because they're the same, I can just kind of copy that number over. So 24 hand grips. And if you get me 12 bodies, 12 seats, 36 wheels, 24 pedals, and 24 hand grips, I can get 12 big wheels out of that. So that's not that difficult. You were probably able to do that in your head and you're thinking, sir, this is easy. You said chemistry was a little bit more difficult, right? <clears throat> so I was able to figure this stuff out from the original recipe in the blue here. This is my original recipe to make a big wheel or my original reaction that yields a big wheel. I could also answer other questions. I'm going to erase this. How many big wheels could I make if I had a ton of every part but I only had 40 pedals. So I've got a ton of bodies, a whole you know truck full of, of seats and wheels and, and hand grips, but I only have 40 pedals left in stock. How many big wheels could I make? Well, every one big wheel needs two pedals. So this number is twice as large as this. So in your head, you're thinking already, sir, it's 20 big wheels. I get it. So I could get 20 of these big wheels, right? There's a two to one relationship. Whatever this number is, this is half of it, right? One is half of two. So whatever this is, this is half. This is 40, what's half of that? 20, right? 
Easy math. All right, you guys got this. What if, and I'll do this one in pink, what if I had 60 wheels? How many seats would I need, All right? So how many seats? Well, if I compare wheels and seats, they're right here next to each other. For every three of these, I, ha I need one of those. So if I have 60, to turn three into one, I gotta divide it by three, so I'll divide this by three. And this is what you do in your head. You're saying, if I got 60 wheels, and the relationship is three to one, then that means I need 20 seats. And you'd be correct. How many pedals would I need? So again, it's three of these for every two of those. And you're thinking three to two, this is gonna be 40 pedals. All right, so pretty simple, all right? And basically what you're saying is, you know, this is 120, this is 320s, this is 220s, right? So you're doing this math in your head more than likely you're able to kind of figure this out, right? Well, what I just did was I tricked you. By talking about the big wheel and the parts that were needed and doing all these little calculations in your head, I tricked you into doing stoichiometry and you didn't even know it, right? Just like the time Ricky had his big wedding, Bubbles didn't want to get dressed up, so he bought a t-shirt that looked like a tuxedo and fooled everybody. I just fooled you, just like Bubbles did. So how does this happen? All right, now we're gonna talk about some real chemistry. We'll get rid of the big wheel. God, I wish I had a big wheel. So, <clears throat> if we look at a balanced chemical reaction, there are coefficients, right? Or amounts to each part of this, right? So we look, when we wanted one big wheel, we took one, one, three, two, and two. When we wanted 10 big wheels, 10 of these, 10 of these, 30, 20, and 20. It was easy, right? You just basically were multiplying the numbers and looking at the relationship, right? You were using these coefficients or the amounts. How many bodies go for every two of these? How many of these can make, you know, you're doing that. You're relating things based on the amount required to make the product, right? So whenever we use the term amount in chemistry, it means moles, right? So since these coefficients are the amount of each reactant or each product, these coefficients are the same as moles. So I'm just writing MOL. So that means one mole of bodies will go with one mole of seats, three moles of wheels will be required, and two moles of pedals and two moles of hand grips will make one mole of big wheels, All right? That's 602 hexillion big wheels. So enough with the big wheels. Let's try to apply this to a real chemical reaction. And what we're going to do with is the synthesis of ammonia from nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. So that would look like this. Nitrogen and hydrogen are diatomic gases. So N2 plus H2 yields ammonia, NH3. All right, now, we know there's a problem with this. I've got two ends going in and only one coming out. There's a little one here that we don't see. So this doesn't balance. So now I've got to balance it. So I'm going to balance it with my red here for contrast. Two ends are going in. Only one is coming out. So a two is going to go there. And of course, <clears throat> I've got two hydrogens going in and two times three, which is six hydrogens coming out. So three times two is six. Now this is balanced. Right? Technically, there's a one here, but I don't show that one, but I'm showing it here now. All right? So I balance this. And remember, balancing is the second most important skill in chemistry after names and formulas. And you'll start to see why as we go through more and more of the stoichiometry. So here's our formula. The coefficients are one, three, and two, respectively. We know that these are the amount of moles. All right? The coefficients we can treat as moles. Or amounts. One amount of nitrogen will go around along with 
three amounts of hydrogen to produce two amounts of ammonia. All right? One mole of this, three moles of that, and two moles of this will be made. So we could answer the following, couldn't we? How many moles of each reactant are needed to make six moles of ammonia? So if I needed six moles of this, there's my ammonia, and I needed six moles, how many moles of each of these would I need? How many moles of that would I need? How many moles of that would I need? All right? Again, you're relating these based on numbers. So the relationship between nitrogen and ammonia is one to two. Whatever ammonia is, this is half, right? Because one is half of two. Or you can look at it, this number gets doubled when we go to here. Whatever this coefficient is, this will always be doubled. So what will go here? And you're thinking, sir, I get it. It's a three, right? Same thing here. You're thinking the relationship here is one to three. Whatever this is, this number is three times larger. So if this is three moles, which we just figured out, three times larger would be nine moles, right? So you were probably able to figure that out in your head, right? And if you look at it, two times three is six, three times three is nine, one times three is three. So there is a relationship between these amounts. What if I had to make 10 moles of ammonia? What if I had to make 10 moles of it? Again, whatever this is, our first thing is half of it. This was two, this was one, it's half. This was 10, this is five. And we know that this relationship, this becomes three times larger. So one times three gives me three. Five times three gives me 15. Just like three times three gave me nine in the pink example. So again, it's very easy to, to do this, right? You're doing this in your head probably, correct? We could also ask this, I'll erase this. Try to keep this up nice and neat. Didn't do a very good job of that. Mole, mole, mole. How many moles of hydrogen are needed? So how many moles of this are needed? if I have four moles of nitrogen. So if I have four moles of this, how much hydrogen could react with that? Look at this in the original recipe. For every one of these, I need three of those. All right, this is three times greater than that. So four times three is 12. How much ammonia could I make? Well, for every one of these, there's two of those. This number doubles and becomes that number. So this number doubles and gives us eight moles of ammonia. All right? Not really hard stuff. Simple math. All right? You probably were ahead of me probably thinking, sir, can we speed it up? But there's a relationship here based on the coefficients. I got the green numbers here because I looked at the relationship of these red coefficients in the recipe or the chemical equation. Right, one last one, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll do it in black. How many moles of nitrogen are needed to react with 24 moles of hydrogen? So if I have 24 moles of this, how many moles of that will I need? Well, if I look at it, for every three of those, I've only got one of those. I've got one third of this number right here, All right? So if I have 24, one-third of 24 is 8. All right? Or look at it, 1 times 3 is 3, 8 times 3 is 24. It, it works the same way either way. So I can do a whole variety of things. I can take a product and see how much reactant I need. I can look at my, my reactants and, and be able to calculate how much product I can make. If I have one reactant, I can tell how much of the other one I need in order to run the reaction. So this is what stoichiometry is, and it's very, very useful. Stoichiometry is what gets you paid in chemistry, all right? So when you did this in your head, I tricked you again. 
right? You were doing these calculations in your head, and I tricked you into doing stoichiometry again. You didn't know it, right? I fooled you, just like Bubbles again. In the back seat of the car there getting driven around, Bubbles is a G. There he is, right? You guys that I just tricked probably weren't impressed that Sir tricked you twice now already in this lesson, right? You guys are these grumpy looking guys, Ricky and Julian. Unimpressed students right there. All right. Anyway, just messing around. Yeah, let's do some more real chemistry here. So the real deal. <clears throat> We're going to use uh, do some stoichiometry using the proper rules and format. All right. So let's get that balance equation back up here. And then... I'm going to use the whole board here, so I'm going to eventually move this, but we need, um, we'll need, we'll use the questions from before and show how the math is done. So the two of the earlier questions that you already figured out, we're going to do those again, all right? Only we'll show the, 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 the real calculation, all right? So the first question is going to be, I'm going to put this up here. So one ammonia, one and two, plus three hydrogens gives me ammonia, and there will be two of them. So I squeeze my equation up there. I need that. To do any stoichiometry, I have to have the balanced chemical reaction first. Just the way it is. You can't do it. This is my recipe. I can't tell you how much of something or how much I need of something to make something unless I've got the recipe there. And that's what this is. It's a recipe. So the first question was, how many moles of hydrogen are needed? So moles of hydrogen are needed if I have four moles of nitrogen. So I have four moles of this. How many moles of that? Are going to be needed. So what will that look like? Well, I always start with what I'm given. So I'll do the calculation down here in green. So it will be four moles of nitrogen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the ratio between these numbers. So if I look at it, whatever I have in this nitrogen, it's going to increase by three, right? One times three gives me three. You already knew the answer was 12 to this. We worked it out in the previous slide, so I'll put the 12 there. But we're going to show how to get it here. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by 3 moles of hydrogen for every mole of nitrogen. So there's a 3 to 1 relationship here. 3 to 1, there it is, 3 to 1. And of course what happens is when I multiply moles of nitrogen on top and on bottom, they cancel out. And I'll get 4 times 3, which is 12, and divide it by 1, so it'll stay as 12. And now my units are moles of hydrogen gas. All right? Pretty straightforward. That's what we got. The second part was how much ammonia could be produced. So we're looking at moles of ammonia. How much of that could be produced? Well, again, I'll start with what I was given, and I'll do this one in pink, All right? So I have four moles of nitrogen. I'll start with what was given in the problem, <clears throat> and now there's a relationship. So let's go back to my recipe. For every one of these, I've got twice as many of those. If I have four here, I'll have twice as many here. We know the answer is eight from the previous slide, All right? How do we show it mathematically? Four moles of nitrogen gas times... 2 moles of ammonia for every 1 mole of nitrogen gas. And what will happen is the moles of nitrogen on top and on bottom cancel when I multiply, and I'll be left with moles of ammonia. And 4 times 2 is 8. Divide it by 1. That doesn't make a difference, dividing by 1. So 4 times 2 is 8. And my answer is 8 moles, just like we knew it was going to be. But this shows us mathematically how to cancel things out. And again, we're using that relationship, right? Here there's a 3 to 1 relationship, 3 to 1. From here to here there's a 2 to 1 relationship, 2 to 1. So this little fraction thing here shows the relationship between the moles. That is called the 
mole ratio. So that two to one here, that three to one right here, this is my mole ratio here, All right? The mole ratio, by multiplying by the mole ratio, I get the right answer every time, all right? So that wasn't that hard. You did it in your head, but now you know how to do it in proper mathematical format and structure on a piece of paper or whiteboard, right? This is what we have to be able to do, is be able to show our work. Anyway, let's try that second question. I'm going to erase this. You can go back and pause the video if you wanted to take a you know, longer look at that. So it says, how many moles of nitrogen, all right, and I'll do this one in black. How many moles of nitrogen, so looking for X number of moles there, are needed to react with 24 moles of that? All right, of hydrogen gas. So I'm gonna start off with what I'm given. I was given 24 moles of hydrogen. I'm gonna multiply it by my mole ratio. Whatever this is, it's one third when it goes here. So whatever this is, it's one third. Three becomes one, that's one third. 12 became four, that's one third. So I multiply by one mole of nitrogen gas for every three moles of hydrogen gas. So what I did was, I used this. I multiplied my moles of hydrogen gas, the 24 moles, and I multiplied it by one mole of nitrogen for every three hydrogens. When I multiply that, moles of hydrogen on top and on bottom are gonna cancel out. And I will be left with 24 times one is 24, divided by three, and that's eight moles. And that's what we got before. We got eight moles when we did this earlier. And that's of nitrogen gas. The only unit left is moles of nitrogen gas. So pretty easy, correct? I think so. So that's, that's the end of it, really. That's pretty easy stuff. Now, it can get a little bit more complex. But actually, no, I'm going to show you the more complex stuff. Uh, but I'm going to show you a much easier way to do it. It's not the end. I tricked you again. For the third time in this video, you've been tricked again. Right? This is too easy. So, <laughs> I'm laughing at you here. If it was in the classroom, I'd get to laugh at you face to face, but I got to do it virtually online now. So, <clears throat> I have an easier way of doing it than this because some people forget. I think this is pretty simple, but some people get messed up in the numbers. I'm going to show you an even easier way that you'll never mess up because where people mess up is right here. I'll circle it in the orange. They mess up on this. They'll put the three moles up here and the one mole here because they know the relationship between these two things is a three and a one. But they screw this up and they'll put the three up here and the one here and that's, we don't want that. So what I use is something called the head over heels method, All right? Now, this is my double secret probation way of doing this. You can't, you know, not everyone knows this. Other teachers won't know this, but here's how it works. Uh, it's called the head over heels method. It's way easier than doing it this way but you still get the correct answer, all right? <clears throat> so I use a series of columns under each substance and in the equation, an arrow that represents the mole ratio. So I'm gonna use an arrow that helps set this up and I'll show you the columns in just a second, all right? So all you have to remember is that you were, heads over, uh, you were head over heels about chemistry. If you can remember that, head over heels, all right? It's called the head over heels method. You're gonna be fine, all right? So pay close attention to how this works. If you get this and you turn this in as an answer, I'm fine with that. But this way, you'll never mess up this part. All right, so let's get that equation back up here and let's get the questions back up here, all right? So I'm gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna use my whole board here and we're gonna do some stoichiometry using the head over heels method, okay? All right, so. So I'll get my equation up here and I had hydrogen gas plus nitrogen gas gives me ammonia, 
The black marker is going to have to go. It's starting to fade. See you later, black marker. All right. <clears throat> so to balance this off, I remember we had a two here because two nitrogens and that was here. I reversed these two. I will fix those. I'll need that black marker for a second. Good thing I didn't throw it too far. This one was N2. I want to keep it the same as the video. This one was H2. All right. And then the balance of the two is here. Na3 was here. There's our balance equation. All right. Now our first question, I'll do each of the questions in a color. So what I do is I treat, I treat, give each thing a column. So on my paper, I, I kind of have this. This is how I'm seeing it. I may not even draw these in here, but all my work for nitrogen is done in this column. All my work for hydrogen is done in this column. All my work for ammonia is done in this column. All right. So if I'm asking how much ammonia do I need, I'll do the work here. If I'm asking how much hydrogen is required, I'll do the work there. So the first one was, all right, I'm doing the same questions. I'm just, I'm just going to be using a different method, the head over heels method, all right? So, and I'll write that up here, head over heels method of stoichiometry. So, the first question, if you remember, is how many moles of hydrogen are needed if I have four moles of nitrogen. So basically for nitrogen, I wrote it in this column for the nitrogen gas, I need the moles of hydrogen. So what I do is I take, as long as I have it in moles, I'll take this and I use an arrow and I bring it over from this column to this column and I rewrite it, four moles. So I rewrite it and now multiplying by the mole ratio. How did that mole ratio go? It was a fraction thing, right? Watch this. Head over heels. The head of the arrow is at the three. The heel or tail of the arrow is at a one. I'm gonna write a one in there, even though we don't, don't normally do it. So in our equation, the head of the arrow is at the three. The heel of the arrow is at the one in the main equation. And if it's head over heels, it's three over one. The head of the arrow over the heel of the arrow. There's my mole ratio. And then I multiply that out. 4 times 3 is 12. Divide it by 1 is 12 moles. And that was our answer from before. And it's 12 moles of hydrogen gas. Because I'm doing the work in the hydrogen column. All right? How much ammonia could be produced? Well, I can do that too. I take an arrow and I just bring it over to ammonia. 4 moles, bring it over. That's really bad penmanship, sorry about that. Times my mole ratio. The head of the arrow is at the two. The heel of the arrow is at the one. Head over heels, two over one. And that means I can make eight moles of ammonia. Easy enough, All right? So that's the first question. And those were the answers we got. We got 12 moles of that and eight moles of that. If you go back in the video and look at it, you'll see it, All right? The next question, if you remember, is how many moles of nitrogen are needed to react with 24 moles of hydrogen? I'll do that one down here in the green. So I got 24 moles of this, right? And it's asking me how many moles of nitrogen are needed? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my arrow and I'm going to go over here. I'm going to rewrite the 24 moles. And I'm going to multiply it by a fraction, which is my mole ratio. Now the head of the arrow is over here now, and that's a 1. Over the heel of the arrow. The heel of the arrow is back here, and that's where the 3 is. So head over heels, 24 times 1 is 24. Divided by 3 equals 8 moles. My answer is 8 moles. If you check back in the video, that's what we got before is 8 moles. So by using the arrow, right, in the proper direction, I look at head over heels or head over heels. All right? And it works every time, 100% of the time. And the great thing about head over heels is if you set this up head over heels of the arrow, you'll never get your mole ratios backwards. All right? I know it's 8 moles of nitrogen because I brought it here. Anyway, 
Now you can go do some stoichiometry like a bunch of rocket scientists, chemistry bosses, right? Like these guys. Anyway, I hope everything made sense. I'm going to put a simple worksheet to do on the, uh, on the uh, D2L site for us today. And uh, give it a try. Very simple. Whether you want to do it the old-fashioned way or the head-over-heels way, either way is acceptable. All right? Thank you very much. I hope it made sense. If there's any comments, questions, or concerns, throw them in the comment section of this YouTube video or reach out to me through Edsby, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.